I hate to say it, but Deli Ali's not the man you think he is. And the diametrically opposed narratives we've heard about him over the last half a dozen years showcase a big problem not just in football, but society as a whole. First, he was labelled as a wonder kid that had fallen by the wayside and completely wasted the god-given talent he was blessed with. Then, all of a sudden, after his interview with Gary Neville, he became an immensely honest and brave individual with a troubled past that eventually caught up with him. Neither of those tags are necessarily incorrect, but as new information is revealed, which I'll get onto in a minute, the truth lies somewhere in between. Let's start from the very beginning. At MK Dons, Delhi was making headlines for all the right reasons. He took League One by storm as a teenager and attracted interest from both Liverpool and Tottenham, with the latter snapping him up without a moment's hesitation. There, he was basically the equivalent of what Jude Bellingham is today. He was awarded his England debut just two months after his Premier League one and appeared to be picking up individual honours for fun. This included the Young Player of the Year in 2017 and 2018, the goal of the season for a mind-boggling finish against Crystal Palace, as well as a place in the Team of the Year across the aforementioned years. On the pitch, his game seemingly had it all, from goals and assists to tenacity and work rate, and it only seemed like a matter of time before he ended up at the Real Madrid or Bayern Munichs of the world. However, 2019 is when shit began to go down. He was quickly gaining a reputation as a player who couldn't keep a lid on his emotions, and that very hot temper sign sent off on more than one occasion. Thereafter, he picked up four injuries in quick succession, and his time away from the game saw him embroiled in a leaked sex tape scandal, which, as it turns out, happened to come alongside reports that suggesting he had developed an addiction to Fortnite, an online video game that those of you over 35 are unlikely to be aware of. Once he did eventually return to action, his end product, and in turn confidence, fell off a proverbial cliff. The manager he made his name under in Mauricio Pochettino was sacked, and Jose Mourinho, a man who isn't afraid to go to war with his own players publicly, appointed. Funnily enough, he actually started like a house on fire under Jose with three goals in three games. That however proved to be a false dawn, and things went completely tits up thereafter. Mourinho was filmed calling him a fucking lazy bastard on an Amazon Prime documentary, and social media lapped that up almost instantly. Slowly but surely, Dele went from being Tottenham's golden boy to nothing more than a bench warmer. Eventually, the club decided it was time to part ways, and Frank Lampard's Everton snapped him up on a free transfer. While Delhi did put in a decent shift, which Evertonians believe played a part in them staying up, he was a shadow of the player he used to be. With no goals or assists to his name, he was loaned out to Besiktas, where he really stunk the place up. He was welcomed like a god at the airport, but chased out of Turkey for a string of poor performances, the last of which saw him subbed off in the 29th minute for tactical reasons with his side 2 0 down. Many of us, myself included, felt that Delhi had simply lost its hunger due to the fame and fortune that comes with being a top level Premier League player, and obscurity is what he was destined for. Needless to say, everything changed once the overlap episode with Darren Neville dropped last July, as viewers found out about the trauma Delhi had been through, from being sexually assaulted as a child to picking up a sleep tablet addiction. Delhi then revealed he went through six weeks of therapy in the USA, and was on the road to recovery. Unfortunately, he hasn't played a minute of football in over 14 months, and his latest comments on Monday Night Football about targeting a place in the England squad for the 2026 World Cup sound far-fetched, albeit admirable. In fact, his immediate future is up in the air, with his Everton contract set to expire in the summer. As helpful as the club has been during his rehab, there's no room for sentiment in the sport, so Delhi will likely be out the door unless something drastically changes between now and next month, which is an unrealistic expectation for a bloke who will take a minute to get up to match fitness after so long out. Now, moving on to the actual issue at hand, which is Delhi's side of the story. He told the world that his parents, a Nigerian father and British mother, were responsible for his turbulent past suggesting that his dad abandoned him while his mum was an alcoholic who couldn't even take care of herself. He also alleged that he was sent over to Nigeria in order to be disciplined, before being adopted by his maid Harry Hickford's parents, who happens to be a footballer himself. Believe it or not, pretty much everything Delhi said has been debunked. His dad did indeed leave the family behind, but that's because he divorced his mother and the court ruled that the latter should have full custody of a young Delhi. Moreover, his old man is the one who paid for him to come over to Nigeria, where Delhi, rather than being disciplined, lived the life of absolute luxury in Lagos. He attended the most expensive private school in the country and had servants at home working for him around the clock. Delhi was having the time of his life, but decided to move back to the UK because of how good he was at football. There, his mother, 
Far from being an alcoholic, was working day and night but struggling to make ends meet. She couldn't afford a car to drive him to training, so suggested he stay at the Hickford household on weekdays as they could just let Dele tag along with their son to training. Dele then spent the weekends together with his biological mother before deciding he wanted no further contact with her once he made it into the big time. Following a Spurs game, his mom waited at the car park to try and repair the relationship and understand why Dele was behaving in the manner that he was, but he shunned her advances. Shortly after, she was contacted by a representative of Delhi, who claimed that if she ever turned up to White Hart Lane unannounced ever again, he'd have her permanently banned from the stadium. Delhi's father too came to watch his son play, but was met with a similar fate. Needless to say, none of us can know exactly what went down, but it's important to note that not everything is black or white. Do I still empathize with everything Delhi's been through? Absolutely. I wouldn't wish some of the things he's faced on my worst enemy. Thankfully, he's still only 28, and has plenty of time to turn his career around, and and I sincerely hope he does exactly that. However, it's no good pretending he's some kind of saint now either. Clearly, there have been mistakes made on both sides, and hopefully all parties can come to a common consensus about it in the future. Why Delhi exaggerated some of the claims he's made is anyone's guess. Do let me know your own thoughts down below, and I'll catch you in the next one folks. Peace.